I've made over a thousand videos on YouTube in the last three years and I've learned to speak with clarity and confidence. In the past year, I've also given 25 speeches at numerous different colleges across the country, which has helped me to speak better in front of a group of people. But here's the reality. I was never like this. In fact, here's a video of me back from 2019. Good morning. My name is Shan Sharma. I am currently 17 years old and I study grade 12 in Ryan International School, Mumbai. And uh, I am preparing currently uh, in uh, for boards examination as well as JE mains and advance. And here is another video of me right before I joined college. For a long time, colleges around the world are trying to find a method to determine which person or which student would actually graduate from graduate and the ones that would drop out. As you can see, it is embarrassing. I had this weird accent, all thanks to the English movies I was watching. I used to stammer all the time, use tons of filler words and phrases, and overall looked quite unconfident. Thankfully, things have changed for the better. And throughout this video, I'm gonna share with you five amazing things that you can do to improve your communication skills and become more confident whenever you're talking to a particular person or in a group of people. And if you've watched this video till the very end, there's a challenge that you can take up that that will improve your communication skills in the next 45 days to ensure that you start 2024 with a lot more confidence and fluency in your communication skills. But let me first share a story that will help you understand why communicating clearly is important for your career. So back in 2019, in my first year of college, I participated in a 24 hour long hackathon. In that span of time, using my expert coding skills, I created a tool that I wanted to show at the end of the hackathon. I was in front of 10 people and I could not speak a single word. I was all over the place using filler words and stammering and unable to communicate clearly. I lost that hackathon, but when I went back home, I realized something. Even if my coding skills are a 10 on 10, but my communication ability is a 3 on 10 or a 4 on 10, I will not be able to win. You're just as good as what you can communicate. If you build an amazing tool, but you're not able to sell it to people, you're not able to create the USP for it, no one is gonna download it. No one is gonna buy it. And so the bottom line is, communicating effectively is the single most important skill that will transform the career trajectory that you can have. Now that you've understood the importance, let's finally talk about how can you speak effectively. And to be honest with you, it is not about knowing all the words in the English dictionary. You do not need to go to the dictionary and look for a word every single day and add it to your vocabulary. I am not talking about that. What you need in the professional world to communicate effectively is is that confidence that you radiate in the way you speak, in the way you write and communicate. I meet so many people, both online and offline, every single month, but most of them lack the confidence to speak with power. And so if you're shy and underconfident in communicating effectively, here are five things that you need to do right now. Number one, whenever you're talking to anyone, maintain an eye contact. Imagine if I was just you know, looking here or there or there and talking to you, you would not be interested. You would feel that I lack the confidence. I have some insecurities or I'm just not the right person. I don't have the authority. On the other hand, when I directly look at you, you can see the confidence radiate and you can see that this person knows what he's talking about. Now, this does not mean that you need to stare at someone 100% of the time. No, that looks creepy. Do not do that. But what I'm talking about is maintain an eye contact directly at the person for at least 80 to 90% of the conversation. Number two, you need to have an open body language. There are so many times I see people coming and talking to me and they're like this. Hmm, okay, understood. And how did you do that? And how do you learn that? And that's literally what they do all the time. They would be talking to me with their legs pointed at some other direction. That literally shows that you want to go somewhere else, but you're stuck in this particular conversation and people can sense it. People can sense your interest in a particular conversation right from the way that you are using your body gestures. The best thing you can do is to go from this to opening up your body. Use those hand movements as a visual cue to explain things one after the other. The words coming out of your mouth should be aligned with the hand and the gestures that you are using. On number three, you need to improve your body posture. Right now, I am talking to you, I am energetic, I am looking in your eyes and I am upright. 
when I'm sitting. Imagine what if I was just slouching like this, right? I was just, you know, laying back like this and talking about you. You would not feel that same level of confidence and interest, right? And that is so important. And that's just one example. When you move into a room, your posture should radiate confidence. This is the biggest lesson I've learned. I recently went to a friend of mine in Hyderabad last year, and he was able to identify this. He was like, why do slouch you slouch? Why are you like this? You have to be upright and you have to puff out that chest of yours and you have to walk like this, not like this, right? And you can actually see the difference in how you're communicating and how the other person feels about what you have to say. These three steps were to look more confident. Now let's talk about how do you sound more confident? Number one, you need to use your volume. So many of us are speaking quietly. That is boring. When you're talking to a group of people, you need to bring that energy in the room. And so you need to speak at a level which is two to three times higher than your current pitch when you're just talking to a normal friend or when you're talking to people on a phone. The biggest mistake you make when you are going on a platform on a stage to talk to people is that you think that when I have that mic, I can speak with low pitch and low volume and it will all be fine. And that's where you make a mistake. When you speak with a louder volume, you have a different level of energy in the convos and the speeches that you're giving out. The second tip is to end each sentence you're speaking on a lower pitch. So many of us make this mistake of starting with a sentence and ending it on a higher pitch. That is a big mistake, which makes every sentence sound like a question. And how would that become? I am Ishan Sharma and I am making videos. That is a wrong way to speak. Do not do that. Always analyze how you're speaking and how you're communicating and notice the pitch that you're using. That is the most important thing to understand. The third tip to speak with more confidence is to take pauses. Taking a brief moment of silence is the most interesting thing you can do to hook people in, to create that authority that you are confident in what you're speaking and you don't need to rush over. I made this mistake when I started making videos and when I started talking to a group of people, I used to speak very fast. I would always be running like a local train and I would never take a pause. I would never talk slowly. And people can actually sense that. You are sounding more passionate, but at the same time, you're speaking too fast. I cannot process everything that you're speaking at this speed and you need to slow down. When you slow down, you have more emphasis on everything that you're speaking. And every word that comes out of your mouth means a lot more. Even if the sentence does not make any sense, it feels like you're speaking something truly magical and groundbreaking. So you start communicating more slowly and you take more pauses. Just take more pauses. Let everyone around you understand what you've just spoken. And that is a great way to make people more interested in what you have to say. So those were some tips that will help you look more confident and sound more confident at the same time. But now let's talk about when you're talking to a person one on one, right? You looked at someone, you found them interesting in some event, in a lecture, in a coaching class, and you want to approach them. What do you do? Well, the first thing is the small talk. When you start talking to them for the first time, you need to ask some general questions. Now, most people hate the small talk. They do not want to go into it. They really want to go into the deeper conversations. And that's where they make the biggest mistake. See, you need to understand one thing. The small talk is what creates interest for people to go deeper into conversations, right? When you go out there and you ask people, hey, how's your day going? What was your weekend like? What shows are you watching? What is the most interesting thing about you? You are creating more questions that you can then ask someone later on. Now, most of you, if you are shy and underconfident, you would not be comfortable talking about yourself. So the best thing you can do is to start being more curious in the other person, right? And ask questions about their life, about their interests, about their hobbies. What do they like to do in their free time? That's a great conversation starter that can take you to many different directions. People ask me this one question and that is, you know, where are you from? They ask me that all the time. They're like, are you from Bangalore? You don't look like you're from Bangalore. And I start with my elaborate reply, which is the second tip. You have to elaborate your replies. So many people, you know, when I would ask you, where do you live? They'd be like, oh, I just live in New Delhi. That 
is a cold reply to an question which could have led to so many deeper conversations and i'll tell you what i did people would ask me where are you from and i would say oh i was born in khandwa which is in madhya pradesh small town near indore but i never stayed there for long i've changed 10 different cities and 14 different schools in 12 years of my schooling living across the country from new delhi to mumbai to hyderabad i've learned to adapt to new situations What I've done right here is given a more elaborate reply and people can ask me so many different questions. If they are from Madhya Pradesh they'll be like, "Oh, I'm also from Madhya Pradesh. Have you visited this place?" Or they can ask a more curious question. Why did you do that? Why did you change so many cities? Why did you change so many schools? Or they can ask me about how difficult was it to adapt to new different situations. The point is to create more elaborate replies for deeper conversations to get to know someone better. And that is exactly how you become better at conversing with people that is how you create intrigue in someone to get to know you better the third tip for effective conversations is to have stories to tell people would ask me what is the most interesting adventure you've been on and i would talk about my trip to thailand and bangkok the point is you need to have interesting stories to tell that is how you become an amazing person to talk to and to just have a good time with The best thing you can do is to have a bunch of stories in your mind that you can just talk about over and over to multiple people. Another very important thing to focus on is the speech rate modulation. A mistake you might be making is to speak in the same speed for all of the conversations that you are a part of, and that is a problem. There will be sentences and parts of your conversation where you need to slow down. because when you slow down you can explain a point with much more precision on the other hand there are parts in which you might want to speed up and you need to understand when to speed up when to slow down and that is what creates that effective communication and that is why people would want to come to you and talk to you more often along with speech rate is the tonality of what you are speaking see 99% of people when they're communicating with someone they have this poker face they're just like this Yes, hi. Hello. Okay. The problem with this face is that it lacks emotion. When you're talking to someone, you need to have that emotion that you can communicate without even saying anything, right? Think about those, you know, piano lessons that you might be taking. A piano tone can give you a sense of happiness. It can make you sad. it can make you feel different emotions without even speaking anything and that's all possible because of the feel that you get and you can get the same feel in the way that you are communicating with your facial expressions so the tonality of what you're speaking will depend highly on your facial expressions so always make sure that you match the expressions of your face with what you are communicating another mistake people make is they start including ums and ahs in their communication they would start speaking there'll be one sentence then they'll be like and um ah uh. and then this happened now i understand even elon musk does it but that is a completely different story and exception when you start using those filler words it tells that you are unprepared that you are not confident on the subject that you're talking about you are not having the authority and that confidence to speak with clarity i have been the victim of this for the longest time i used to use right all the time at the end of my sentence i would just be like right 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 and that used to be so bad i learned this later on that i need to replace the filler words and the phrases and the non words with silence don't speak anything in between just be clear concise and that is most important in a speech or when talking to anyone out there another mistake people make is they start having these visual habits they'll start talking to people they'll they'll adjust their frame of specs they will you know scratch their head or they will you know put their hands in their pockets something or the other avoid all of this it creates a lack of confidence and it shows that you're just not sure of what you're doing or what you're talking about from a ted talk i learned about this really interesting vocal exercise that can actually make you more clear and help you communicate with more confidence the first thing you need to do before you start speaking to anyone or on a public platform is to use your lips and do this do this for as long as you can for 3 to 4 times and you will have a lot more moving ability you know most of our muscles around our face and mouth are stiff 
we are not speaking that often so the muscles are stiff what you need to do is to free them up so that you can communicate by actually moving your face and your jaw and your tongue better and more often and so the flexibility that you unlock helps you communicate with more clarity now imagine that you're communicating in front of a group of people you want to excel public speaking well here are a few things that you need to master number one you need to engage with the audience as much as possible right start by asking a question and ask people to raise their hands or to communicate say what they are thinking and that helps them stay hooked to what you have to say number two starting the speech with a question really creates that journey that you are taking your audience onto and it helps them you know attach themselves to it number three you must rehearse as much as possible before the actual event it is crazy how people go to events unprepared and they are just using filler words and non words and they end up making it look unprepared and it genuinely lacks focus what you need is to rehearse as much as possible the first TED talk I gave before it I was practicing for at least three to four hours for a 16 minute speech I was practicing for multiple hours and that helped me learn how will I communicate on the stage the biggest mistake you do when you are rehearsing is that you just look at the script and you just read the script out okay learn the small talk okay learn the small talk what you need to do is to start communicating like you would on the platform platform and on the stage right so you say learn the small talk when you are using the body language and you are communicating the way you would communicate in your event that helps you practice a lot better another mistake people make is that they overload their slides and presentations too much we all know of examples of people which create ppts with 10 different pointers on every single slide and each pointer has multiple sub points please avoid that that just looks horrible you need to have one idea on one slide and that is all that you need i remember making a 130 page long slide and people would ask me itni lambi slide kaise cover karoge in 45 minutes i said it's actually shorter i have just included one idea on one slide and that is all that i'm talking about it makes it a lot more digestible for your audience to retain what you are speaking and it just makes everything look a lot more structured and organized. So always remember one idea, one slide, and break it down as much as you can. So that was how do you speak with confidence. Next up, let's also talk about how do you write effectively. This is probably the most important part of it because you will be writing emails, writing messages, you'll be writing long captions, you'll be writing LinkedIn posts every single day in your career. And if you do not know how to effectively communicate yourself on text, my friend, your game is over. You will just not be able to get to the right opportunities and you will lose out on a huge potential. So step one, you need to install the Grammarly plugin in your laptop. It's a free tool that will check every single spelling mistake and if your sentence is even making sense or not. Whenever you're communicating on email or messages, cut the fluff, come straight to the point and use as less abbreviations and jargons as possible. I am fed up of, you know, talking with freelancers and people who are just writing, you know, Hey, H-R-U, how are you? Right? And then they say WBU, what about you? And that looks so cringe. Stop using these cringe abbreviations. Write with clarity, don't use any jargons and write only what is necessary. I get so many emails every day and people are writing multiple long paragraphs. I have no time to read them. I immediately just delete them because I cannot give in that much time. So whenever you're talking to someone on email, a simple rule of thumb, name of the person, comma, next line, have one or two sentences at max about who you are and how do you relate with that person. Next up, write a couple of sentences about what is the context and why should I read this email. And lastly, have your ask. Be very specific about what you want from that other person and make it as easy for them to find you through multiple links. Link your Instagram or LinkedIn or put in your portfolio, but just make it easy for them to discover you. Lastly, the most powerful thing you can do is to include a video of yourself about two minutes in length talking about what do you really do and what is it that you can help the other person with and you will immediately find results because people can sense the intent that you have when you create a video and you send it to someone versus sending a blatant resume and waiting for them to reply back the simple habit of having a video letter is really really powerful start implementing it and you will see tons of benefits and here's a simple trick at the end that will make people like you a lot more 
start smiling more often when you're talking to people most people have this you know resting face this poker face change it by just having a smile not just your mouth smile with your eyes and people can obviously spot the difference all right we're at the end of the video and here is a challenge that you can adopt for the next 45 days that will help you speak effectively and with confidence the first thing you need to do is to record a five minute video of yourself with no preparation and no planning sit and shoot a five minute video with your phone. Just talk about your day. What is it that you're interested in? What exactly happened throughout the day? And do that for five minutes. Once you have that five minute video, step two is to look at that, turn the volume up and keep the phone sideways. Listen how you speak. What is the speech rate? Are you modulating your voice? What is the tonality of your language? Are you using the filler words or not? How loud are you when communicating? And the next step is to mute the audio and look at the video. What is your body language like? How do your hands move? What are the gestures you're doing? What are the unnecessary habits that you're employing? When you have a look at all of that, take note of it as well. And the fourth step is to transcribe everything that you've spoken word by word and identify how could you make it smaller and more concise and to the point. Just do this activity, 30 minutes it will take every single day for the next 45 days and by the end of 2023, you would have learned to speak with much more clarity and confidence. Another activity for the next 45 days is to take a book that you are reading and read out loud and when you are reading it loud, actually use your mouth movements and overdo it. If you're shy and introvert, this is the book for you, helping you speak English fluently with confidence and clarity. You hear that? I am actually overdoing my mouth movements and that is helping me speak with more clarity. Doing these two challenges for the next 45 days will help you speak English with much more confidence and clarity. And that is the goal by the time 2023 ends. Thank you so much for watching this video. Please share it with a friend of yours. Click a screenshot of this and put it on social media and tag me at Ishan Sharma 790 and let's become the best version of ourselves in the next one and a half month. Thank you so much for watching. If you have any questions, let me know in the comment section below. Also, if you're still watching, write in the comment section, I watched till the very end. I know it was a long video, but thank you so much for sticking till the very end. Thank you. I will see you in the next video.